Hey everybody, welcome to a clicked off, well, typically this would be a clicked off uh, Patreon exclusive class, but I figured with uh, all of the kind of chaos that's been going on, I would go ahead and publish this month's uh, Patreon class as a <clears throat> kind of a public service to everyone, give everyone that's sitting at home a little bit to watch. Um, but if you like what you see here, uh, these classes come in on... Uh, five dollars and above on patreon.com forward slash click uh, and that also enters you into our monthly giveaways um, but today I want to talk a little bit about kind of just kind of a free form sort of class on everyone's favorite map uh, to kind of hate on and uh, do a little visual talk on why this map is as bad as it is uh, this is the ancient hold uh, premium map um, and I want to talk about two different versions of the teams and you know things that are negative play experiences that a lot of teams just can't handle with um, the first thing I want to talk about in general here so let's just dive right in um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, I'll just delete these guys because I just wanted I was trying to show how they would look. Let's just talk about, first of all, three orange Proteuses on this map. Um, now for a lot of teams, there's only very few figures that ignore characters for movement uh, in Modern right now, or even coming out in the Justice League Unlimited set. Um, you know, characters with, uh, I mean, even improved movement characters doesn't help in some of these situations. Um, you know, just depending on how it, uh, how it works, and especially with ID cards going away. Uh, a lot of this thoughts in my head come along from uh, retirement happening, right? So Super Rare Cyclops is going away. There's only like one or two figures that even ignore blocking for targeting uh, at this point. I think maybe it's a prize Magneto um, and ignore blocking doesn't help uh, in these situations. Um, so Ancient Hold with three orange Proteuses um, you come into where this map has doors and at all of these intersections. So, in general, if you don't have flight, just having a figure here and here means you can't move past this. Uh, so, if you can just park here at the door, you don't have anything um, that you can move past, really. Um, and really, that can knock out a lot of teams um, from just locking them out by just by that. And, you know, that that's bad enough in and of itself, right? As a negative play experience. Um, <clears throat> but you look at uh, Orange Proteus, and just for a reminder on what Orange Proteus does got to be able to spell it right. Uh, Orange Proteus, right? He's 20 points. He's got Monster and Brute. Uh, but the big thing that he has is um, his other characters within three squares can't use improved abilities. So that's uh, improved movement, improved targeting, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so that means it can't move through these doors, right? So, you know, you place an orange Proteus at each of these doors, and you can't move through. So your team has to be able to knock down a barrier, like say here, knock down a wall, then be able to get in here and attack. So this is only 60 points of a team. And with Brute and Monster, so we just kind of look at like a monster version of that. And I'm just going to go with something that um, goes past retirement. Um, there's a lot of different things. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, your Undertaker here. Uh, very good offensive figure. Especially when you give him something like a, just any sort of object. Venom Harness. 
uh, you know, exospecs, lots of different choices to give him post-retirement. I mean, of course, the blood axe is kind of the de facto standard right now, pre-retirement. Um, but, you know, we'll just kind of go through and build a little bit of a team uh, to just get your mind thinking on ways to exploit the ancient hold map. Uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. So, you know, Undertaker, um, you know, something post-retirement, like this uh, Weapon H, you know, I think he needs a time to shine, and it may very well be possible that he can do that post-retirement. Um... You know, charge flurry, good attack, good defense, uh, stop click. Um, you know, again, give him something like a, a steel energy of some sort. Um, you know, and let's not forget that Proteus has his two free squares of blocking. Um, you know, Dario, Agar, Minotaur, uh, you know, the big bad immortal Hulk. Um, you know, even Blade on monster teams. Um, just so much stuff, our good friend Onslaught. Now, a big thing is that Proteus does affect your team, so you can't necessarily use phasing to get out of that room. So you got to think about how you set up your initial figures, you know, when to go swarms, um, you know, just tons and tons of good monsters to up your theme, right? And, I, and I, what I want to kind of leave with here is, the theme is going to be or could be really huge post retirement and it, when it comes down to folks that will practice a team on these maps now we've seen say in the past few weeks uh you know scott and uh, crampton and isaac ab you know winning the online winner maps with non-theme teams but that comes down to those players are really good <clears throat> practicing their non-theme teams. If they put the same level of effort into playing one of these theme teams that abused Ancient Hold, they would probably nearly be unstoppable. Um, I'm more of a ranged guy myself, as a lot of people know, so I just typically see how to combat this sort of map. And I don't think post-retirement that I might have to just succumb to sort of a close combat sort of team that would face something along these lines. Um, it's not, uh, it's, you know, range is not going to be that good. Um, just depending, right? Because we've got the big Batman coming and the rise of the JLU and the mystical theme teams. Um, but I think you th have things like Monster with a lot of good folks here. Um, that are going to that are going to make a splash as kind of a, even a gatekeeper sort of team, and I talk about that right. It's just these are different types of teams that you're going to have to face um, to make it through any amount of tournament. So the other team that he has, uh, the other keyword that Proteus has is brute, um, and this is one of the more interesting ones that is actually brought up uh, by Adam Freeman. Um, so brute, the big thing here is that you have 60 points and then so let's just say that's 40 points so that's eight friends of humanity so that's a plus 11 theme team for 100 points so that's beating out you know giant girls uh, and a lot of other things so if we just add into this team eight friends of humanity um two three four Five, six, seven, uh, I don't know, eight, right? And you can adjust that from there. Um, so lots of things. Again, Immortal Hulk has Brute. Um, you know, this Weapon H that I'm talking about. Um, you know, uh, the Prime Colossus. The, uh, you know, even Juggernaut at 100 points. <laughs> you know, a lot of these things have Brute as we go down through here. And the big thing I think is interesting is that Vulture has Brute. 
So everyone's been inducting him to S.H.I.E.L.D. or non-theme team and that sort of thing. Uh, but just having Vulture fully encased in a room that's impenetrable by close combat. Because um, you got to remember, your other teams that you can do, uh, Proteus can punch out this wall and then place two free squares of barrier, you know, say here and here, right, here and here. So that doubles down this wall and then still protects him on this wall. Um, you know, with no space to get through. Um, so Vulture has plenty of time to get going. Now, this team lacks a little bit of support powers, right? I mean, you've got some not so great things, um, you know, that are out there still. Um, go all the way past this. These are retiring, you know, the big Lobo for a little don't die effect, right? Even on, tie, even on set of Vulture, uh, Mongol can make it a name theme team. You know, he can bring in warriors <clears throat> to the mix. Um, but there's just, you know, that brute really comes out to top, um, I believe, um, when you're thinking about how can I abuse Ancient Hold? How can my close combat team get as far as possible up the map without getting attacked? Um, you know, or even just as a lockdown team, right? Just as a, if you can't deal with me, you lose, right? And I talked a little bit about this on, I think, episode 127. You know, there are people out there that will build a team like this um, and just say, well, either we take a 0-0 zero, zero, or you come up and let me KO one of your figures and then continue to lock down the map. I mean, that is an option, right? Are you going to go just take them to 0-0, zero, zero, um, wait out the 50 minutes, um, or you know try your best right so if try your best is move up and try to shoot out a wall and try to get a line and um you know proteus roll shape change then you're stuck right there's there's not a lot you can do you know they'll ko one of your figures and then you're locked out of the game um now it comes down to it's this map that's the problem this team in and of itself would not be good if it was put on a muck time or, uh, you know, WWE arena or just any random number of outdoor maps or indoor maps, uh, cause it can't quite create enough barrier barrier to protect all these small figures. But whenever it has an ancient hold with doors on the starting areas, blocking on the starting areas, <clears throat> then it's, it's quite impenetrable. Um, and, you know, and given that this is a plus 11 for under 100 points, you know, you can get up to 14, 15 pretty easily with just some other random, random figures added in that are decent, right? They don't have to die. They don't, they're not, they're, they're good. Lobo's good. Lobo will be better post-retirement. Um, you know, you can run Lobo out there, boom, boom, pop off dog and run him back. That's totally a thing that can be done. Um, now, is that good with IDs? No, there's a lot of things that generate a lot of attacks against Lobo um, right now. <sighs> so it, it makes it pretty hard for them to be able to um, just immediately wreck Lobo. Um, and you know, and you can even just have a plus 12 with him at, uh, him at 200 points. Um, Run him out there, run him back, bury yourself up. You know, you know these things take practice, right? These are early thoughts, but these are things I wanted to illustrate when it comes down to why do we say the Ancient Hold team is bad? Uh, or why do we say the Ancient Hold map is, is bad for the game and should be evaluated um, when regarding its legality? Um, or, you know, or some of these things should be fixed, right? Um, theme team bonuses should be fixed. Now, I'm not a uh, game designer or a rules designer to suggest how they should fix Theme Team, right? They can cap it, give generics a different bonus than named. You know, there's multiple ways to look at it, right? The, the game designers can look at that. Um, now, the other kind of big bad on this one um, that is really 
uh, quite obtrusive is if you just look at um, if you just look at the mystical theme team that's coming to power out of JLU. Uh, see if I can find it in here. The, you know the mystical theme team, right? And there's already been some mediocre amounts of success uh, with the uh, Tri Sentinel team uh, on this map with a Doom buggy. Um, now this team comes into play where it can move up you know it's a little bit more aggressive than the, the turtle tactics here so it does have some capability of protecting itself um, but if you just look at this team in general it's had a few different versions that have been published um, and find the by the way, I would like to thank Bob Murdoch uh, for having all of these files and sprites made up for Roll20. It's been super helpful. Um, but, and this is one of those things where like Sheriff Strange is good post-retirement uh, because he can provide this team leadership. Um, but like I said, this team has had a few different versions that have had uh, some version of success. Now, you look at this team in general, and this is just kind of the core of it. It can have more Tri Sentinels, less Tri Sentinels, more Wendigos, you know, whatever, right? Um, it's just high theme, high probability of being able to abuse the map itself. Uh, so let's bring in Sheriff Strange here. You know, you got to remember in a post ID world, right? There's just random good stuff put together is is now good. Um, so, in this situation, this map, you know, your ranged heavy teams have a hard time getting into here, or even your um, regular size teams wouldn't like let's just say vulture right because that's kind of always the the de facto standard um and i just want to copy sheriff strange here to just say as an example um, i realize that this team is over points but just insert any sort of generic mystical fig and oh wait there we go right huh if only we were getting a new low cost mystical fig dr fate right there let me find a Dr. Fate photo here. Just any random looking Dr. Fate. So 65 points, right? Is the new one. Then you can add 10 point ones on top of that. So you get 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 4 for 100 pretty easily. Um, So now, with a Sheriff Strange to get you some leadership, oh, there it is, I clicked the button, there we go. So, just add in, what do we say? Three of those guys for a plus four, for a hundred. Then Sheriff Strange is 150. Three Wendigos is, our three Tri-Sentinels is 90, so that's 240. And then uh, that leaves you 60 points, so five Wendigos. I, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Um, but you got to remember, no IDs going forward. Say so five Wendigos. One, two, three, four, five. So Wendigo, Fate Clone, Fate Clone, Fate Clone, Fate Clone. You know, then maybe add another fake clone or drop a Wendigo or something. That's not enough filling that up right. Um, and maybe there's ways to better do this, right? Don't critique on how I'm necessarily filling this up, but like if you think of Vulture in general, um, Vulture has to be able to get across this map, fill up all of these rooms, 
right, get through all of these rooms, have enough movement to navigate this terrain, get to this room, get to either this back square, uh, so come all the way around, because he can't fly through here necessarily. Um, so this comes down to they need to fix Tri-Sentinel, because necessarily Tri-Sentinel abuse isn't that bad, except when you have a map where they can be totally protected on move up. Um, so a lot of these things, you know, take a little bit of time, but on a plus so many theme team here, you get five actions on this team, right? Dr. Fate, right? If your force has five plus such characters, action total plus two, so that's three, five, you got a leadership, you got six actions. Um, you know, this is, this is ridiculous, right? So now, like in just, in, it's just in our brute scenario here, um, you know, Tri Sentinel. You know, he what? Tri Sentinel has a. <clears throat> Sentinel has an eight movement with sidestep. So he goes, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, something like that. That and then sidesteps and then blows up all the blocking within three by just activating retail for no apparent reason. Now, in this brute scenario, if Vulture can't get out, let's just say they have the ability to get into, you know, this bigger room fairly easily before Vulture can get set up. You know, with six actions, it's not inconceivable that they'd be able to phase up that far, move that far, bust through walls and get that far. Um, you know, this room's completely full. You know, Vulture would have to be able to knock down this wall, get into this room, flurry through the whole room, you know, things that may not be able to be done. It could be, it's possible, um, but they have to deal with being able to get through this wall, a uh, figure out of this wall, down to here, right? Um, you know, so then the next turn, they just come up, walk up, activate retail for no reason blow up three all of these characters die for just existing and tri sentinel didn't even do anything to them um so tri sentinel doesn't have to walk through there for those that are wondering um colossal retaliation can be activated at any time um you just take it until it's not legal uh, given current WizKids ruling so if no other colossal retaliation has been activated this turn blah 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 well you don't get to do any of this, but you can activate the free, right? But you don't get to do any of this first sentence. After resolutions, destroy all blocking terrain within three squares. And then his movement power says when he destroys one or more pieces of blocking terrain, deal one of penetrating damage to each opposing character that was adjacent to one or more destroyed pieces of terrain. Um, so, you know, he blows up blocking, he clears up the map and is just able to do things for free that he shouldn't be able to do. So that comes into play again. Either WizKids need to take a look at how negative play experience the Ancient Hold is, or they need to fix Tri-Sentinel. Now, given the current environment, this is not me complaining, I want to be clear. This is me discussing things, explaining and showing visually what you might experience should we get to play at Origins because um, teams like this are possible to be ran with IDs being legal and you've got folks that have played the mystical version of this team that have mm, maybe kind of slacked off on it a little bit lately um, but as we go into nationals take a look at this team this kind of stuff is really good um, you throw in a doom buggy on this team to where you're negative one to your attack, trying to attack a 21-20 from range. And it's not fun. It's not easy to do. A lot of teams don't have the perplex. Um, <clears throat> so that that's really just part of what you run into when you have a map that's this obtrusive. Now, it comes into, it's a battle... Um, it's a battle of theme teams. 
Uh, let's see, I don't know if they have the Prime Batman in here yet. They do have Prime Batman. So, <sighs> you know, the Doctor Fate has the Justice League team, Justice League keyword. Um, <clears throat> so it comes down to you know Batman can be on a shield team Batman can be an Avenger or Batman can just be on the Justice League now there's probably some other police teams uh, even detective that might be worth a worth a shot um, but these are things that stick out really huge so it's going to be a battle of can Batman get his shots off or is he going to be trying to battle other massively sized theme teams on Ancient Hold? Now, it's kind of one of pick your poisons, right? Are you worried about Batman? Or are you worried about a Tri-Sentinel dealing your team three dam or damage for no reason? Or because of a bad ruling? Or bad game design? Um, or a brute team or a monster team completely locking your team out so you can't attack at least in the example of Batman you can um, build your team to not be so squishy that to where a one shot won't kill him or they can't be one shotted and then you can get a chance to retaliate across the map or you can you know, have some barrier, have some things in play. It looks like we've gotten some good stuff from Black Widow coming up. Uh, that's going to maybe protect against Batman. Um, but it's it's really a battle of theme teams of, of Vulture versus Batman versus um, these huge other theme teams. Mystical, Justice League, uh, Monster, Brute. Um you know, to determine the battle for support superiority and teams that can exploit the ancient hold map uh, I believe are ones that uh, that will have an advantage uh, for those that can get access to this map those that will play on this map those that will practice on this map and become really good at it um, that's a big deal you know, these non theme teams that are winning are being played by players that practice their team, know their placements, know what they do. Um, you know, kind of regardless, I know Scotch joked about, well, I didn't know Jason Weingard did this or that. He does know. He just plays really well. Uh, he plays around some of those deficiencies from just years of experience. Um, for those that follow, you know, Critical Clicks and Click Stuff. Um, but anyways, let's see, that's a, you know, that's a, that's about a good, you know, I went for 28 minutes talking about this so far. So, you know, post in the comment section, you know, on Facebook or YouTube here, um, with what you think about uh, the ancient hold and is it really that bad or is it that good? Keep in mind, if you attack one of these figures that come out, all of these retails are coming. We didn't even talk about really getting past the first turn of the game. Just something to think about as uh, you're sitting here uh, eating your uh, toilet paper and uh, hand sanitizer sandwiches at your house. Stay safe out of there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Like what you see? Check us out. Facebook.com forward slash clicks off. Patreon.com forward slash clicks off. Have a good rest of your day.